Uh, welcome to episode two, speaking with Marco Cesero on living with your new self. 2005, Jordan Thomas lost his feet in a boating accident. And you know, he found a purpose in that accident. As we talk, this guy runs a foundation that helps children around the world to get their prosthetics. Talk about a misery becoming your ministry. All right. So somebody sees you. Yeah. Says, who is this guy? Yeah. So what would you say who this guy is? Well, today, you know, it's today it's very different than I think that answer used to be. Uh -huh. You know, so my accident was at 16. Uh -huh. And it's funny because this year I'm now 32. So half of my life I've had a disability. Uh -huh. and half of my life I was able-bodied. I think early on after my boating accident, my answer would have been very different than it is today. So today, I, because like we were saying, I, I answered that question based on what I thought you wanted to hear. Uh, uh, so so we, we, there's a tendency of us as humans trying to tell a story that sometimes it's not a story of ourselves. We want to, yes. we want to polish it so that when we present it to the world, it's a polished story. Exactly. But it's not true. It's not true. And I was, and I was given all these external accolades of you're a hero, you're an inspiration, those things. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that meant that I had to be perfect. That I had to always be strong. I had to oh. always be courageous. I had to always be brave. I had to always have this mask on, right? And so I was presenting this mask out to the world, but internally there was conflict and there was turmoil. And that was just pain and grief and sorrow and sadness about the things that I'd been through in my life, you know? So when did you realize that? You know what? I'm not going to be doing this anymore. I just want people to know who I am and what I go through every day in its original form without polishing it. I just want people to know this is who I am. For me, you know, I realized, whoa, I'm going to look different. Yeah. I'm not going to look as I was with my legs 28 years having my feet and then yeah. amputation. But then I realized, if I try to hide this, yeah. I'm adding an additional stressor yes. to a stressful life that we already have anyway. Right. So I chose to, I am going to present myself the way I am because I realize it's what is in me yes. that's important. It's not what is, uh, yes, what is outside me is still important, but most importantly is what is in me yeah. and what I realized and discovered was still in me is my inner power yeah. and my ability to be who I want to be. Yeah, and that's that's the power. And I think I think culturally, societally, I think somewhere I got this message of, I, a, a message was internalized somewhere growing up. I don't know where of like I need to look good, or that there in another seed was this thing of I'm not enough as I am. I've got to be something different. I've got to be more. I've got to be better. I've got to whatever it is. And then somewhere in my early 30s, there was this, man, I'm enough as I am, with or without legs, wounded or not wounded, like with pain or without pain, like all of those things. And so there was a conscious like commitment, a decision on my part in terms of like, this is just who I am. I'm enough as I am. And I don't need to be anybody different than who I am. Because that's the, that's like, that's what you're saying. That's the, that's the juice. That's the power. And talking of the wounds that we have, you know, for me and you. I think the only difference between me and you and the general population that are not missing their feet is people think that we have more wounds because of the physical outlook of ourselves. Yeah, totally. but is that true? No. No. I think it's the human condi condition. I think we're all wounded in a way. And I think that's the thing. Is people look at our legs and they go, oh, wow, I can't imagine. It's like we were talking about. It's like you can see these wounds. But I'll tell you, the wounds that were more painful for me were the ones that were internal not the physical. The physical was nothing compared to the emotional, psychological, spiritual woundedness that I experienced, right? And so the message that I try to apply is we are all wounded. Like you've lost your legs one way or another, you know? And so it's A, acknowledging, I think, that woundedness. B, saying like, okay, here it is. And what do I want to do about it? How do I want to heal from that woundedness? Because 
no one gets through life without some kind of woundedness, period. So for me, it was all about like embracing that and being like, I'm okay with this woundedness. And, part, and the, not only that, but like, it's who makes me who I am today. Like, I can't imagine my life with my life still. Like the way that this has sort of been the catalyst for change for me and sort of evolving into like accepting who I am as a, a human has like changed my life. And not only that, but it's also having these kinds of conversations like heart to heart where you get to really, I think that's where we find connection. And for me too, you know, growing up, I had this vision in my head that success, you know, we, and, and we live in a society that we always pushing for success, More. but nobody tells us, you know, success does not mean that doing things without challenges. Yeah. Yet you can be hit by being at the top of your life or just at the bottom of your life, but it's a cycle of life yeah. that I think just like insurance, you know, we have car insurance, health insurance, but these insurances are readiness just in case something bad happens, yeah. then we are covered. But in our true living, we've not been provided by that insurance that, hey, this is what will keep you covered. We just thrown into this universe and then, hey, make a story and, and there's no manual. Yeah. There's no, no there's no Jordan manual that at 32, this is what yeah. you will look like. Yeah. You just have to make your own manual. But making this manual also doesn't mean you have to impress the entire society by polishing your life. Totally. To exactly. And it's, there is no manual. And I didn't do it perfectly. And there is no perfect. No. Right? Eliminating that idea of like doing it perfectly is it was a big thing for me. And it's like, some days just i'm just doing the best i can and some days that looks very different than other days some days i'm just in a place of like i'm wounded and i'm scared and i fall back into that stuff and that's just okay and so like give myself permission to just feel what i feel authentically and vulnerably it's like that's part of the human experience and it's part of the beauty of the whole thing is that like i think that we have it through what we've been through a different perspective in terms of like peaks and valleys like, I think we've experienced a level of grief that is pretty low, mm -hmm. but I think on the flip side, I think we've also seen how that grief and that sorrow can help us not only to, to live more fully, but to also have impact on sort of the community and people that are around us. Because I think they see that and they go, there's something intriguing about it. They're like, wow, like, what is that thing? Because like with you, with like how bright you shine, in terms of, you know, despite all of the stuff that you've been through, there's something that's like, wow, that's true. There's resilience in that. And I think that's something that's really attractive to people. And I also think, you know, the power of our, you know, each person has a story. Yeah. You don't have to be missing a feet to have a story. Okay. Each person has their own story. But I think where we are losing that human connection mm -hmm. is this perfect ideology in our heads that, you know, I have to present this perfect life yeah. in order to have a story totally but then we lose our human connection but for somebody watching this what do you want them to get from this story for me i think it's it's being able to not i think what i see so often is people there's like this tendency to put like me and my experience on a pedestal like that's different mm -hmm. so for me the power is in me saying eliminate the pedestal I'm not that much different from you, each person, in terms of like the woundedness and the grief. And so for me, it's acknowledging like each of us is given a set of circumstances, whatever it looks like, and it's different for all of us, but that it's okay and that we can get through those things and that those things ultimately enrich our lives. And along the way, because for me, easily, I wouldn't change a single thing that's happened in my life. And there's been tons of trauma, tons of grief, tons of sorrow, right? Yes. But those things have given me this newfound gratitude and appreciation for life and this, this human element, because it's removed like blockage, right? I don't yes. feel the need right now sitting next to you to say uh -huh. like, oh, I need to tell him this because it sounds good. Uh -huh. It's just like living in my true self and being that. And then in doing that, it's like, I'm just okay. And learning to live in uncomfortable situations comfortably. Completely. And then if it's still uncomfortable, it's just uncomfortable. And yeah, so what? And yeah, there's yeah. nothing else to do. Just yeah. embrace it at the moment and just... It is what it is. Yeah. Radical acceptance. 
just accepting what is because that was a big thing for me was like I couldn't accept I couldn't accept it there were times where it was difficult for me to accept like what I'd been through and what I was feeling and all that when I just get out of the way of trying to resist what is my life's a lot easier the new normal I you know we, we change is inevitable we always in constant change but what I think I see sometimes is people struggling from living with their new self you know yeah. whether it's as a married person as an amputee a new job or maybe not having a job I think that is where the problem starts people cannot reconcile their new self and their old self and know that it doesn't really matter where you've been where you came from but where you're going is so important yeah totally and to not lose hope like there's it's so easy like it was it was a challenge for me like to reconcile like here I was this young athlete that got a lot of success like had a lot of success with what I was able to do physically and so then all of a sudden there's this shift to like now what like now that my life's been turned upside down and I physically have lost a part of my body like now what do I do right Yeah. It, it is crazy sometimes, like, I look onto that sometimes and based on my own story, say, huh, I didn't realize that you have to lose something so big yeah. to gain even bigger things in life. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have had this passion about humanity I had know, I, I not gone through what I've been through. And that's the thing that's wild, right, is people come up to me, and I'm sure they come up to you and say, like, wow, I can't imagine, like, the loss of your legs. And it's like... The loss of my legs was so small uh -huh. relative to the things that I've gained in terms of like learning about myself, who I am, the value of like connecting with other people and being a support for other people that are systematically have no chance, right? And that's like what's so great I think about the foundation is that we give these kids a chance and the stuff that you're doing in Kenya. It's like I don't, I would never have done those things had I not lost my legs. And so it's like I lost a tiny bit to gain perspective and gratitude and appreciation and all of it. And I think for somebody watching, they kind of partially have that part of the foundation. Would you want to say more about that? Like, what is it that you're doing now yeah, to so, give to the community? So after my accident, um, I, I didn't know anything about prosthetics. I don't know about you, if you did. I, no, you know, I did. I knew nothing. And so the more I learned about prosthetics and how they're covered and how kids aren't given the devices they need, I recognized like, I it, this is my cause. This, like, there was a recognition of, like, this is why I was put on this earth. And so we started a foundation in the hospital. And so what we do is we provide prosthetic devices to kids until they're adults. And so uh, we have 81 kids right now that we give prosthetics to all around the world. And, um, you know, I'm doing that full time. And every day I wake up, it's like there's a sense of gratitude and appreciation. Like, I don't need coffee to get out of bed. I don't need... You know, there's enough fire that's going because like, you know you're changing a life, and it's and it's why it's literally why I exist as a as a human in this form, like is to do this work. And if someone wants to donate to uh, your foundation, where do they go? JordanThomasFoundation.org. JordanThomasFoundation.org, and you can make a donation and yeah. change a life. Change a life, and you see it around the world. It's not even here in the United States right. alone. Everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere in the world. Yep. It's incredible. It's I the best. I think you are doing the best thing that you can. Hey, who knew losing your feet will make you be a global figure? Yeah. Wouldn't change it. Thank you very much. Love you, dude. Love you. Thank you so much for being with us. I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more inspirational videos. See you next time.